Happy August, guys. Hmm. Another yeah, August this will probably come out in August. It's August is a few mm-hmm. days away. As we record this. Yeah. yeah. This lovely burn barrel. Yeah. How's it going? <sighs> I mean, I'm in the middle of the work day, so... So it's it's been going since 7.30 this morning, and it may go until 7.30 tonight. But having having a nice break in the middle of the day to spend some time with my podcast friends, well, that's, that's good, friendly fun, isn't it? I'm D-Day. <laughs> Ooh, we're going to do a late in the intro intro, Bye. which makes me Rex. Uh, and I'm Beth. And, As we generally are. And we are friends hanging out in a garage bedroom. Mm-hmm. A garage bedroom studio open air closet. <laughs> and oh, bathroom. And, and uh, half bath. And open air water feature. Open air water feature in the wet months. Which mm-hmm. We'll someday have again. Mm-hmm. It, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe the drought is the best thing that could happen to this property. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We should zero scape, mm-hmm. like tear out everything that's soil based and just put in rocks and maybe a cactus or three. Uh, we'll just drought so all that moisture curve. around the foundation. <laughs> Make that someone else's problem. <laughs> I'm being a seawall, guys. I'm a seawall. You're a sea something. <clears throat> ah, radio humor. Uh, so we just got back from camping. Should we, we went, talk about camping? We went camping with our friends. We went camping with our friends. We had a itty bitty burn on the beach. The endless, endless gray foggy beach. It was. It was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, number one uh, low light for you. What was the the least fun, least good thing about it? The temperature and my lack of pants. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was promised a beach with a reasonable temperature, not like the broiling temperatures uh, literally 20 miles away from where we were. And I didn't get it. Uh, yeah, we went to the uh, central Oregon coast, to the Oregon dunes, in the middle of the the latter part of the historic heat dome that melted the west coast. And it was a uh, atrocious everywhere except exactly where we were where it was like 68 degrees and foggy 50 <laughs> 50 degrees if it was an inch it was it was 50 with wind chill but it like the ambient temperature was was really not bad you you felt that as soon as the sunset and the wind stopped you're like oh okay it's nice and then it was dark and cold <laughs> yeah yeah so lack of pants mm-hmm. lack of pants and the sand um i finally get why rex is always going on about what Anakin is going on about, what with hating sand. And holy shit, like, it's sand is so irritating. much worse than playa dust. It gets everywhere. It's so, so bonuses for sand, much more comfortable padding for sleeping on. Yes. Than playa. Oh, yeah. Sand is good for pass out time. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, sand in my bed, I did not care. Like, I would knock playa dust out of my bed and, and hate it and hate it. But if my camping bed is sandy, who the fuck cares? But. Wiping your butt <laughs> with sand all the time everywhere and not having access to showers means that you get like sand road burn on your anus. Or at least I did. Maybe I should just speak for my anus. I, I, I wish you'd have mentioned it. I had so many wet wipes. <laughs> uh, I didn't have that many wet wipes, but I did have my toilet paper in a gallon Ziploc bag. I, I have my toilet in paper. In my poop crater. I... <laughs> and the poop crater provides. <laughs> Man, we should have gotten a picture of that poop crater. That would have been a good picture for this episode instead of the effigy. Um, I do have a picture of the crater, but not with your toilet in it. Well, the toilet is what makes the poop crater the poop crater. Actually, what I have a picture of is the um, the grave that was there when we first arrived. Yeah. D-Day set up his toilet bath bucket, his his bucket of shit like in eyeline from the fire pit to the ocean. Like if Well, you... it wasn't in eyeline because the crater was deep and so you could not see You're right. I you could totally not you, saw you your ass. You could see his his toilet if uh if you were standing at ground level, you would just see like from hips up him sitting on his, <laughs> his toilet. toilet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Read in my book. When we arrived at our, our designated camping spot that Beth and I had scouted out a couple of weeks back, uh, there had clearly been some hippies there before us, maybe. So some some crafty outdoors people. Maybe they weren't hippies. 
based. Maybe on. they were just meth heads. But they had they had built some meth heads with a meth. very nice shovel, Beth. And mm. They left for us. They, yeah, they'd built a bunch of like driftwood benches and uh, little structures, and then they dug a foxhole. I I think would maybe be accurate. It was like deep enough to stand in and duck down out of rifle fire, uh, and big enough for maybe two people to to. Wow, that's much darker than what I was picturing. I was just picturing a bunch of meth heads who got really excited about digging. Beth, we were in Oregon. Everything is about guns. <laughs> You're right. It's <laughs> like they could have been meth heads digging for fun, but it was about guns. It was about mm-hmm. guns. And uh, when we uh, set up camp and checked again, there was a dead mouse or... I saw an alive or something. I saw an alive mouse on my way out. I was like, yeah. "Look at these little dunes mice." It was it was big for a mouse, but it looked like a mouse. Yeah, like it was almost rat size, but it, it had mouse features uh, and was quite dead from being some in sort a of large shrew sand hole. <laughs> <laughs> King of the shrews. Yeah, was not about to get out of of that foxhole. No. I really should call it a shrew hole, you know? <sighs> my my low light, if there was any, because uh, really I had a, a absolutely fabulous time, was that uh, after driving overnight to get there and uh, like really having a blast on Friday, I ended up sleeping almost all of Saturday. Uh, it It was like gray all day long. Uh, oh yeah, I, I the went sun never rose. No, I, it was the same level of gray from like eight o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. until like nine o'clock at night. Like I went to bed at, just before dawn, uh, and there's the stretch of the dunes we were on is just like endless miles and miles and miles of extremely shallow ocean edge. So there's no crashing surf. There's just like a constant wet hiss. It's pure white noise. The most featureless pure white noise you could ever hope for. So out, out like a light the minute my head hit the pillow. I woke up like two, three hours later to pee. The sun was kind of up. I went back to bed and then I woke up a couple of three times to almost no light and hiss noise and my brain just went, hmm, guess I'll go back to sleep. (laughs) And I ended up sleeping Almost all of Saturday. I think it was like dinner time when I woke up. It certainly was. Yeah, you were up at like five thirty. Yeah, <laughs> which is fine because I so was up at like four. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I, I'm glad I'm not the only one that. that uh, I'm not sure we saw satellite until like after seven. Yeah, it yeah. took satellite a long time to show back up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we'll be uh, name dropping a bunch of our friends in uh, in this episode. We're not going to give you backstory on them or uh, really stop to contextualize them in any way. But that's who all the names are. Uh, suffice it to say, uh, everybody here is somebody we've really been missing for a couple years. Yeah. Uh, and at least... And one new friend. Two of the people at this camp out have been featured guests on this program. So Is that uh, true? Yeah. We did a Brian episode, an all Brian episode, and uh, Nettles was on the gentleman. Oh, and Nettles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Andy's never actually been on, has oh, he? Oh, and Sar was on. Sar was on. Yeah. Was, so, you know, all the people we've talked to, surprisingly, and more, yeah. and more. Yeah, and our friends who haven't been on the podcast, but who have dropped their phones in their shit in the middle of the night. <laughs> and chose to share that story with us the next morning. Yeah, like, I would have taken that to my fucking grave or at least like two, three months down it, the road. It, I'm not telling you on the beach that the phone that I'm holding in my hand was in my shit last night. I I appreciated it because usually it takes a day or two of at Burning Man before I'm immediately bragging to the people that I love about the most disgusting <laughs> things that have happened to me. It, to me, it just kicked me into the right frame of mind for this kind of event. Mm-hmm. Because it's, yeah, yeah, it made me giggle. Weeping. The wounds were just weeping pus. Um, listeners, friends, people listening to this, if you are like us and were massively disappointed about the event being canceled and a bunch of the other events being canceled, have you have you tried this thing where you get together with a small number of friends and, like, get to you know, do the community thing. Yeah, like it find, really fixed me up. Find somewhere remote, find some BLM land somewhere where, where no one's going to bug you and just go be with your people. Yeah. It's uh, felt so incredible. 
Yeah, this is what was super lovely about this is I know I knew I knew everyone there fairly well, except for two people. And I ended up thinking they were both very neat, very cool people. Like I got to know people for the first time since lockdown, Mm -hmm. like like depth, like intimacy levels increase, Mm -hmm. like finding out whose people are and liking them. And I was just like, oh, fuck, I miss this so much. Like, (laughs) uh, (laughs) Was that your highlight? I mean, my highlight is related to that. Mm. Uh, my highlight is definitely, so we, we have a new friend who, uh, was a listener and, and a guest on the show and a guest on the show and Brian came out and was like, not only just amazing to have around, but like, it would have been impossible for us to do it without Brian. Brian like saved our asses eight ways to Sunday. Brian didn't just save our asses. (laughs) Brian was a godsend to like almost everybody that went down to that beach that weekend. He, uh, He's it, like a spiritual aspect of those dunes that <laughs> saves you from danger he, he when, is, when you get stuck in the dunes. He was uh, the only one who didn't get his face sunburned. <laughs> l- listeners, if, if you recall from his episode, he he does search and rescue stuff, and he came out to the beach in his awesome Jeep 4x4 and did no less than 17 pullouts of cars from the deep sand. Uh, only... Maybe half of which were members of our group. Yeah. Uh, he rescued so many local Oregonians. Yeah. Other idiots from other places, I assume. Um, and those of us that, oh, well, I mean, not that he didn't save us because he did twice, but <laughs> for the few of us who didn't have our cars or trucks dragged out onto the beach, <laughs> he ferried us back and forth from our car, from our parking lot to the campsite to to get our stuff back and forth. It would have taken me like half the day just to carry my 80 pound tent to oh, where we were yeah. camping. Walking in sand, guys, it's really hard. Yeah. Walking in deep sand oh, all of the time is deep, super soft hard. Soft sand just I mean it's lovely to have your feet in it, but it's mm-hmm. just like a five minute walk is a five minute walk. No, I like going out there like, oh we can just go hike up and down the beach and go check out the the woods and like any motion up and down that beach is just exhausting. <laughs> Walking to our little kitchen tent and back was enough to <laughs> to make me not get up the next time I was hungry or thirsty. <laughs> I think what it proves is we're all out of shape from COVID, but yeah, yeah there's a seriously. little bit of that. Uh, <laughs> for sure. A so, little of that. so my my absolute highlight of the trip was uh, getting to be a part of Brian's first hallucinogenic trip. Um, should we say that? Is that an okay thing to say? It's they're I mean, legal. I'll, I'll cut it out. We did a thing that is entirely legal in Oregon mm-hmm. and assisted Brian in that experience and it was a delight. It was really cool and it was it's it's something I love sharing with people. It's something I love getting to see people grapple with and it's uh anyway, one of the reasons I like it so much is I feel like it had it adds a lot of of depth to getting to know people really oh, quick. Yeah. Like it fast forwards, like, uh, seeing people, understanding them, sharing with them, at least it, for me, I know that's not true with, with everyone, but just, that was my highlight was getting the opportunity to do that. How about you, d Um, well, before we move on to me, I think we really need to, uh, give Brian his due and start calling him by his playa name because he did earn a playa name on our, well, I mean, it, it, it still applies. We went to the playa. It, it is go to a playa. playa. It is very technically a playa. <laughs> yeah, so Brian's new playa name is Front Tug. <laughs> oh, it's so... It's I love Andy for this because he managed to take the really lovely thing this human was doing, not just for us, but for, like, literally everyone who was out there and make it a gross sex joke. <laughs> well... We'll we'll see when when he joins us on Playa next year. Knock what whether uh, front tug sticks or whether he can uh, make lifesaver be the the thing. I think lifesaver is pretty good. Lifesaver is pretty good, but it just doesn't have the je ne sais quoi that front tug. <laughs> <laughs> but it could Here be. Here comes that front that tug. It's just a reminder that you do not want to get your Playa name from any of these assholes. So. Great thing about both of them is they can both be 
nuck tats. So what mm-hmm. we should front do. Front tug. Yeah, front tug. Although that comes out being front to tug. Uh, <laughs> and then life. Front tug. Uh, S-A-V-R, lifesaver. We, I like it because they're both wrong. They're both wrong. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, we should we should make him uh, a B test them this this next year. We'll sharpie them on one day, sharpie the others on the next day, see which one uh, suits him better. Oh, you can do social media polls. I'm not <laughs> saying anyone is going to fill them out, but we can certainly put them out there on behalf of tormenting our friend. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't I don't know that it really is fair if he's not actually like embodying the name. No, I we're, we're gonna run into the internet's bias for trolling. He'll be he'll be Bodie McFront Tug face if we're not careful. <laughs> I you know I'm a strong proponent of consent with playa names. <laughs> he didn't resist front tug. You know why? Because he knows what happens when you resist a playa names. <laughs> yeah. It's just it, it, like But he was definitely like perking up when Lifesaver came out as an old party. <laughs> oh, hey, how about that then? <laughs> kind of like with Eyesore <laughs> when she hated being called Pink Eye. <laughs> that one's good cuz it's the same well, I think th- the same call out but a better joke. I think the the but the first thing that was floated for Brian was Savior and I'm like you don't want no. that name. Uh-huh. No, like, that's way too loaded. Like you don't want Allah, you don't want Savior. <laughs> <clears throat> don't no gods please. No. <laughs> Although the purple Jesus is fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, qualifier I'm, qualifier Christ is is all right. Yeah. Uh, th- if you're just one of a rainbow of Jesus then uh, that, that's that's hardly a claim. I am Panoply of Jesus. Rex highlights, or would you D Day? Do you have your D Day dodged? Um, I Deflected. did dodge, but we didn't all do low lights, so I don't know why uh, I'm supposed to dodge. Yeah, okay, D Day highlight low light. Well, I did my low light. Yeah, we all did low lights. Oh, great! What was your low light, Rex? Sleeping. I slept all day. Oh, missed, yeah, Like yeah, almost yeah. an entire day. Yeah, sorry. I um, guess I wasn't paying attention to that because it was so interesting. Actually, um, <laughs> let me, uh, let, me re, uh, can, let me let me take another take at the at the low light because the actual low light is that garbage ass a f- fucking a frame shade structure that we bought from <laughs> Harbor Freight. It was like too clever by half in design and just got eaten by some low grade winds. I, I cut most of you aggrandizing that new purchase out of the last burn barrel. I did Good. put take in our recommendation right off. I Do did put it. in Do the show buy. notes that you should not buy that Harbor Freight uh, <laughs> shade structure. In fact, don't buy anything from <laughs> Harbor Freight except for screwdrivers. I almost electrocuted myself with uh, a Harbor Freight heat gun several months ago. Goddamn Harbor Freight. I, I mean, what do you expect for like a $7 heat gun? Who, Air dryers are more than that. Who gave me the joke? It might have been Andy when you guys were setting up the barn. Maybe it wasn't Andy, but I think it was Andy walked up to me and was like, are they breaking up? <laughs> <laughs> He's as annoyed as you guys get at each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's a garbage piece of equipment. You could tell just by looking at it that like most of the substructure itself was not pinned together in any sort of real real way. I appreciated the struggle of it. I came in and helped for until you guys said it annoyed, and then I'm like, I'm on vacation. I'm not going to hang out with my two friends while they're <coughs> snipping at each other like old married couple. It, it was actually a, a it's a smart design. It was just. Uh, shoddily constructed if that had been done with like double stitching and uh and another set of hitches and like held itself taut the way uh it pretended to um that would be rock solid but as, did it with glue as we were moving people out uh at the end of of the event uh we realized that 80 percent of its structural force had been the coolers <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I shouldn't have shifted those coolers. No. I thought we wanted to take them home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we should throw that in my truck so I can take that to uh, the dumpster tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so highlight then. I liked spending time with my friends um, on the beach around a fire. It is um, really nice. I'm, I am going to say that like one of my favorite things was spending... Literally all day Friday 
chopping wood. I, I was going to say that, that probably the the single biggest highlight for the single biggest number of people at that event was probably chopping wood. Oh my that God. Is what most of the man shaped people at the event did most of the camp out. I mean, I saw some other shaped people doing wood chopping. Uh, not to say that, that non man shaped people didn't, but that the most of the man shaped people spent an exorbitant amount of time. I, so, I, and took glee in it. It was, it was so cute how excited everyone was to chop wood. Yeah. And, Here's the thing about having a fire at a beach that is breezy. You go through wood oh, yeah. really fast. And this is all really dry uh, driftwood. driftwood. So it goes up like a light. And it and it was like high of like 62 degrees and foggy. So everyone was around the fire all day and night. All day. Yeah, we did not anticipate necessarily doing an all-day fire. But we did it all. Yeah. It, it's also, there's something super gratifying about just splitting wood, like when you do it right and the ax just destroys that piece of wood in a single stroke, it's a very like physically gratifying experience. Um, it is it is something I find adorable that so many of my friends are so delighted to chop wood. Uh it's very cute. Yeah. Yeah. Used to have to. That's not a skill I use anymore. When you don't have to. It's great. I saw a guy put you a got it, it's a chore. put an axe into his shin chopping wood at a campout event, and now I don't chop wood. It, they're dangerous if you don't know how to use them. Yeah, if there's a chance that you might put your axe through your shin, you oughtn't chop wood. Yeah, but like I, uh, it took me a while. To like find and test and purchase the the axe that I purchased, like m many people may not know it. Many people probably don't even look at the brands of their scissors. But if you ever have a good pair of scissors and you look at them, they might be a Fiskars. Fiskars makes good scissors, and it turns out they make a pretty incredible fiberglass and like stainless steel axe. And that's my axe. <laughs> This podcast brought to you by Fiskers. Fiskers. Damn, those are good scissors. <laughs> <laughs> and an axe. And an axe. Um, so the thing is, I split a bunch of wood. I for When I was in Seattle for like four years, I lived in a wood-heated house. Mm. I just split it with a splitter and a mallet because mm. I feel much more comfortable with that. And I don't have to worry about putting an axe in my leg. <laughs> and so that's, <clears throat> that's how I do it when I do it because... I saw a guy put an axe into his leg, and it's never left me. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> it never once. Yeah, no, you'll keep seeing that. Yeah, I haven't split a ton of wood in my life, but uh, thanks to what we do at Burning Man, I've pounded a bunch of stuff with sledgehammers. Oh, yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the same motion. And once you've got that motion down where you're, like, you're dropping that weight three, four feet out from your body, and your legs are, like, wider than shoulder width anywhere. They're not coming anywhere near each other. I have some it, right? great pictures of D-Day chopping a giant piece of wood, which are adorable. Did you did you <laughs> take was, a look at them? I did. It was so satisfying when I finally got that fucking log split. <laughs> it was it was nothing but knots of wood and and I cleaved it in half. Yeah. I am really glad that that was your highlight. It was such a massive part of what we were doing out there. <laughs> well, also, it's it's the way that I felt like I really served the community. Um, we we had this plan to have an effigy, but then it was too hungover to make an effigy. <laughs> um, so our wonderful friend Shauna made us an effigy. Shauna's um, dug us a great hole. For yeah, that, that's more how I contributed. I I spent more time with shovel than I did with axe. I yeah. Which but like I want to front load fun. I, I want to front load my day with like chopping wood for the community for seven hours so that when I'm done with that I can be like, oh no, people have to get me beers. <laughs> uh, I'm laying here now. Oh god, D Day, you were so stupidly happy and drunk. Yeah. I like That's it was I hear. it was so <laughs> cute. Oh, are you a little foggy on that night? <laughs> uh <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna say that I've got all the specific stuff. <laughs> you were like being really sweet and sentimental and telling people how much they meant to you. Good. Like, it was really cute. Well, like, we got to have Burning Man time. Uh -huh. It just is one of my principles about being around people who drink a lot is when they break down to their core drunkenness, what is there? And uh, <clears throat> for a lot of people that are uncomfortable to be around, it is like deep anger or deep sadness. Mm -hmm. Um, but for some people, it's emotional aggression, emotional aggression. But for some people, it's like 
uh, desirous of friendship and, and gratitude towards humans in their lives and like happiness about the cool thing that they're doing. And you want to roll around in the sand and then spit all that sand out of your mouth because <laughs> rolling around in the sand is stupid. <gasps> oh my God. Did you hear? Oh, you were so uncomfortably on my knees. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you were like a puppy dog. Do you know that the same night, Satellite did like a <laughs> head dive down a dune? Like Satellite and Ariel were uh, coming back in and Satellite said to Ariel, this is, Ariel told me this story later. I was there. But Ar Satellite was like, should I roll down this dune? <laughs> <laughs> and Ariel was like, I mean, you'll probably be really sandy. And Satellite's like, okay. And then we rolled down the dune. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I went about halfway down a dune on my butt, uh, just screwing around on that that quite tall dune that was between us and the parking lot. Uh huh. I, I decided to see if I could go up it. I went about halfway up it. <laughs> it was really fine sand. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't think I have a pair of dungarees that I would trust enough to keep the sand out. Oh, I just I embraced the sand. It was far less irritating on my skin than playa dust. Yeah, I mean, the thing that I think it really successfully did was get us away from the structures that we've been stuck in this whole pandemic, yeah. right? Like, Yeah, we got to just be outside in the world. In the beautiful people. world with our people, like, just and getting along to getting along. Oh, my God, I Some love having dogs. dogs. I, I other, A, I love other people's dogs, and B, we don't get to see them at Burning Man, and except for except for that one that doesn't actually exist. And the, and the occasional DPW dog. Yeah, the, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but meeting our friends' dogs is really <laughs> gratifying to it, me. It was a, a cute collection of... Uh, very old puppers. Yeah, some and one some, wolf. Some old and broken puppers, <laughs> like two really old dogs. And uh, well, is is Butter really old or is he just broken? Butter was just a little bit broken. Yeah, Butter was broken. <clears throat> Lady's not that old. She's just kind of dopey. Um, she threw up on me the other night. <laughs> <laughs> kind of just walked right over to Rex, huge on my and hands. like you would expect at that point, like the dog would sniff his leg or like lick him or something. But instead of that action, just no. opened its mouth and vomited like a third of a cup of just bile onto oh, his leg. No. no, it was like undigested food. I think it was like cat food, maybe. Oh, like, like ate a bunch of cat uh -huh. food and then threw it up. Yeah. Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> what you get. I And then Tesla, the alpha wolf. Yeah, just a f fucking wolf suddenly hanging out with you. <laughs> like, this is... Coming out of the ether to be, like, incredibly soft and well-suited for the environment. Yeah, Tesla, Satellite's wolf. When Satellite would get into uh, Brian's Jeep at, to drive her out to, to where her car was... And then she just whistles for Tesla and Tesla runs like with the Jeep. It's so it was it was nice to meet a real cool, interesting wild dog with all the sweet old puppers like Chaz. Oh, Chaz just, <laughs> just giving up on life at the beach yeah. and just deciding to be a dying beach dog was fantastic. It, he, he's just so noble looking. He spent and, so long just lying flat in the sand with his head like sliding. three inches <laughs> dipped into the fire pit. Oh, but he's so cute. Oh, yeah. yeah he was not unhappy in any way. He was like, oh, this is a great place for an old dog to spend <laughs> the rest of its sad old dog life. It's interesting to see a creature both be so noble and so resigned at the same time. <laughs> Resignation can be noble. Have you ever seen the gorillas at the zoo? Oh. <laughs> I... The, Try not to. Yeah. It's the not, last it's, time I went to, to any zoo whatsoever was the SF Zoo. Uh, and I watched a gorilla uh, pelt uh, <laughs> visiting Asian businessman with his feces all over his very nice suit. Wow, that's the nicest thing that happens at the zoo. That's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it was very mad. Yeah, I like the small Not the monkeys. gorilla, the, 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 the big apes make me feel the same way that like... Dolphins in an aquarium make me feel. Yeah, zoos just make me sad. I don't yes. get zoos. <laughs> no, 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 not They're... just because of a, a a a ape pelting a 
No. I can I, I can aquarium. Yes. Uh, who cares about fish? They're fish. They're pretty. Yeah. Uh yeah. I honestly I I love animals and I love going to the zoo on the free days that you can if you live in San Francisco. You can go <laughs> one day like a year for free. And if you just stay away from certain exhibits, like you can go see the lizards and mm -hmm. the snakes. You can see the outdoor rotting penguins. They're happier than the ones in the Academy of Sciences because <laughs> they have real sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, you need real sky. You know, and, and you just stay away from the great apes, the big cats. Uh, the, uh, they don't have elephants or do they have elephants? I just avoid I all of them. They have the coldest looking giraffes I have ever <laughs> goddamn seen. <laughs> The San Francisco Zoo Old is giraffes. at the goddamn edge of the Pacific Ocean. And if <gasps> you're not familiar with how incredibly fucking tall giraffes are, there are like these these walking savanna skyscrapers <laughs> in the foggy like beach of San Francisco. It's you can see them from the parking lot. It's <laughs> like with with the fog clinging to the hills behind them. DD, I love that you're positing a listener to this podcast who is unaware of the fact that giraffes. Every time I see them, I'm so surprised they're so goddamn tall. Uh, but but Chaz was noble and resigned, and he kept doing this thing, which I absolutely love. So the dogs would occasionally see another dog and start wandering for them. And because the owners, the people that accompany these dogs are good accompaniers of dogs, they would check in with their dog, call it back, not just allow it to go over and interact when they don't know that dog and they don't know that person. <clears throat> so that would be sometimes the dogs would get up and like beeline and it would be towards something, someone, some dog, but not Chaz. Chaz just beelined for the empty ocean. <laughs> <laughs> like every, like he would just, it, when he wasn't sliding down the sand fire into the fire pit, he was like up and like wanting to just walk out to the ocean. The, the single most satisfying thing for a dog of Chaz's advanced years is to just contemplate oblivion. <laughs> Although Crystal said it was because Chaz really wanted to poop in the ocean. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's also very gratifying. She, that, that, that's why Chaz was headed out there. Yeah. You've marked like two thirds of the of the world if you do that. That's, <laughs> that's now yours. Uh, I, I think it's probably great for a dog to see their business just like float off. <laughs> float off. Float off. No longer Chaz's problem. I, I just, I like camp dogs. I liked having a little pack of camp dogs. Mm -hmm. So my highlight. So you guys are going to ask. So I have... I'm still doing mine. You, Chopping wood. You? <laughs> so Rex, <laughs> I hear you had a favorite thing about being on the beach. So I have been to this beach before. This is uh, where I had my, my wedding. Um, You're... The last time I had a wedding. Yeah. It was up at that beach. Uh and so I, I love that beach. We, we went to that beach because I, I, I knew of it. It's a, a magical place. Incredible. It's the, uh, the location that inspired Frank Herbert to write Dune. Um, it's remote and... It's like an endless, bleak yeah, wasteland. Desolate, <laughs> desolate Beautiful. yeah. Uh, what I didn't know, despite having one of the best times of my life up there... Uh, is that there is bioluminescent plankton in the surf. Mm -hmm. So on Friday night, when we were all uh, enjoying something that's utterly legal in the state of Oregon. Otherwise uh, engaged. We uh, we discovered this fact. And th it was a, And it was confirmed by someone who wasn't doing any substances yes. at all. <laughs> uh, it was a new moon, so there was, there was no moonlight. Uh, we were well outside of the light pollution of any nearby towns. It was like pitch black and there oh, was a, a fog over everything. Uh, and if so, you, you couldn't see anything. When you got out of the range of the firelight, it was a pitch black liminal space. You could hear the ocean grow loud as you walked towards it. That's it. If you turned back, you could like spot the firelight in a, a smudge in the fog. Like, uh, if when you were out there with other people, they would disappear within, like, 
10 feet. Yeah. Like you, you would start seeing them come out of the darkness at about 10 feet. And what you would see as they approached you is a, a like spot of darker darkness. Yeah. In the, Cause the fog was like very lightly ambiently diffusing the starlight. You, you could tell which way was up, <laughs> but that was kind of it out there. And when we walked out to where the surf was just wetting the sand, if you kicked the sand, you would kick up this cloud of sparkles, uh, just little exploding flashes of light. It was the most incredibly magical thing, and I didn't even know it was there in this enchanted place that I knew about. I, I, I love that there was another magical secret hiding in this landscape. It was so cool being out there. So you can't see anyone, but you can see these little sparkles that were all kicking up around us. Um Joe said down by the water, you could like see your footprints, mm -hmm. like that the, they would light up if you were, if it was wetter. Mm -hmm. And you could, you could kind of see the foam on the surf. Like if you got right to where it broke, mm -hmm. you could sort of see a, uh, a curvy line of spirals uh, where the water hit and then receded just for a second. It was fucking cool. Yeah, it was, that was a, a very magical night. Oh my God, that night I like laughed so hard it hurt for the first time in mm. like years. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, secondary highlights, um, being in a open, unobstructed enough space to play with my uh, boomerang for a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find places like that in Oakland. I just had one and it went away. In when, Oh, the um, this was on the drive there. But uh, we were coming down the Umpqua River Valley to the ocean. And right before you hit the, the ocean, there is Elk Town. Yeah, there's an elk observation spot. We got there right at dawn. So there was like mist on the valley floor and the sun coming up or behind the mountains and whatnot quite up. And elk just everywhere, elking out with their elks. So pretty. And I pooped. That's where I pooped. Yeah, it was a good place to poop. Yeah. That section of the world is so gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Right. It's just driving in through the Umqua River Valley is, like, awe-inspiring. <clears throat> Oregon is incredible. And, and full of racists. Full of racists. Uh, and a bunch of libertarians. Nazis at our gas station. There were... <laughs> Did you guys see Nazis at the gas station? Yeah. We, we saw some... Uh, some Nazis at the gas station on our drive back. Uh, we saw... Was it at Gold Beach? No. Okay. No, we didn't go through Gold Beach. We uh, Different Nazis, Beth. Gold Beach, I, I told you guys, I went into the gas station and there was a honest to God Confederate flag. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. And, and a bunch of don't, don't step on snack. <laughs> <laughs> don't step on snack. No, this was some little stop on the I-5. I think doesn't matter. So uh, how did you know they were Nazis? Uh, swastika tattoo. Yeah. Mm. Nazi it up. Yeah. You know, they Fucking told Oregon. the world they were Nazis with yeah. a big swastika tattoo. Uh, There's only one way to really go all in on being a white supremacist. And that's a Nazi tattoo. We found uh, the happening place in um, where Meth where, Junction. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Medford. I, yeah, I yeah. finally. No, that's, you got it right the first time. I finally <laughs> took a nap, and like then Rex pulls in to get gas at like a Circle K in. I, I want. I'm pretty sure it was Medford, and it was like the middle of the night, like one, two in the morning, and there. Oh, were, later than that, you only that took over driving from me like two thirty three. That was after we ate. Hmm. Okay. We like, we got the worst uh, yeah the worst dress patty melts ever and then you started driving and then I fell asleep and then the like the party it was like a fucking block party happening in the middle of the night yeah there were by like a crispy a, crunchy chicken a dozen tweakers in the parking lot of a Circle K just like hanging out it was Doing the weirdest meth. goddamn thing yeah where uh, a Circle K. <laughs> To be fair, I grew up in a town where, like, the happening place for the kids to hang out, like, the real cool, kind of edgy high schoolers would hang out at the hole. 
and the hole was just like the embankment behind the gas station. But sometimes mm. when they got rousted out of there, they'd hang out at the pit. and <laughs> Just deeper than the hole. <laughs> that was just like on the other side of the one street, like closer to the river. So, yeah, feels real normal. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, I wouldn't have been surprised to see them on the sidewalk in a downtown strip or in a parking lot somewhere. It was just weird that they were like at the Circle K. Unincorporated Medford. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, there's no city services at the Circle K. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, that's some that's some rural ass area. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, uh, Medford's like the biggest town in a hundred miles in any direction, too. Anything else about the Dooning Kruger theory camp out? Well, I mean I was going to mention that we hadn't told people that we named the camp out Dooning Kruger. And then we did. Yeah. There was a, a lot of having to be pulled out by Brian. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Is, is that really Dunning-Kruger, or is that just like some Darwin Award shit? Well, uh, we're all still alive. We are all still alive. So, I don't think any of us like thought we were expert off-roaders. No, no. It is a, it is a funny play on words for, yes. for a thing that required us all to be rescued. Though, it is interesting that... Uh, some of the people that he rescued were people who had like bitchin' four by fours. Mm-hmm. None of us did. Like a bunch of us got up onto the beach because we happened to have. It was like, a Subaruific. Yeah, camp a, lot, out. a lot of people drove Subarus or Subaru like all wheel drivers, mm-hmm. which were enough to do most of the driving and only had to be tugged through the one very soft deep patch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So we got towed out on the way out, um, mm-hmm. and. Boy, howdy, it jerks you real hard. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. <clears throat> Same when you're in uh, in Brian's uh, vehicle doing yeah. the towing. Uh, it is jarring. <laughs> yeah. God. I, That's it's not good. at all how a car Don't should do. Don't get move. me wrong. Like, it's good. And thank you very much, Brian. Oh, and he did it Would without- not do again. Would, didn't fuck up any of our cars doing no. it. Like, knew how to attach safely. Mm-hmm. Uh, just- Man, no, he had all the right gear, all the know how. He was a pro professional and is invited hereby on every single camp out I will ever make. <laughs> I mean, really, any situation where we need a safety lead, yeah, that oh man, we're gonna teach him how to how to not spike nails through electric wires oh, yeah. on the playa. So, right. yeah, he's got a quadrant. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was. The, the thing that just gets to me, so like all these beautiful things, all of this lovely stuff, but what I felt when I came back was this huge relief of feeling in a safe and comfortable and loving community. There's this moment when we're out, like all of us are rambling around on various amounts of different substances out in the pitch black sparkle dark and the ocean is right there. And I don't know if you know the West Coast, but the ocean might always eat you. And we're out in public and there are other people camping nearby. And I felt so, so safe. Like I, everyone out there was laughing. I knew who they all were. Like I'd come up and hug someone and then figure out who they were. And that was just like such this huge relief of mm-hmm. feeling safe with everyone around me. Like it is okay to touch people. It's okay to be affectionate. It's I, I like and trust this person that is near me and I feel comfortable with them even when we are impaired in different ways and it is a dark night in the middle of nowhere. You guys think it was additive that this was a, an endeavor for all of us, that, that it, this was not an easy camping trip. We, we all had to um, drive a, 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 at minimum a few hours, most of us uh, quite a long ways. We, we had to deal with rough environments and uh, deal with our own shit, literally. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
It adds I've, to the amount of stories you get to tell. That's for sure. <laughs> well, I've always felt that that part of the Burning Man experience is that uh, the trial that it it is, uh, even by it, just it, its sheer remoteness. Yeah. Uh, and I think there was definitely something. I, if nothing else, we could not have gotten the um, the privacy, the separation. And the uh, naturalness of setting that we got if we hadn't found somewhere as remote Mm -hmm. as we had. I'm still like, I know some BML. I'm I'm like, yes, and let's do the next one at a three-hour drive from the Bay Area. Uh Sure. I mean, like, the the distance had more to do with the fact that we wanted to include some... We Pacific Northwest re- friends. We really wanted to make it so that Portlanders and Seattle folks could come down because those are a bunch of our friends that we don't get to see without the Burning Man event very frequently. But I, I like even if we did something more close by, I, I think having to once you're generally there, having to like trek in and be remote is of benefit. Yes. I agree. There's something really lovely about it just being, and you know, it was weird. So there, by Saturday and Sunday, there were obvious, clear other campouts. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch, I mean, Brian was pulling a bunch of other people off the sand and it's like, <laughs> you would see cars drive down, but like you could see one camp out from where we were. And then another one showed up where we couldn't see where they were camping, but they would occasionally show up over here. Mm-hmm. And you would see people walk down the beach, but Everyone left each other the fuck alone, except for when asking Brian to help them <laughs> p- p- pull uh, cars out of the sand. Which we I don't heard legend <laughs> that there is a man somewhere over in that vicinity <laughs> with a four wheel drive vehicle that can pull you and your friends through the dunes. <laughs> Although most of them were him helping people with luggage back and forth and just running into the people who are already stuck because the hardest and worst part was Was the the part from the parking lot to the actual beach. Well, when we were struggling putting up the uh, kitchen car car barn, some guy came over and I thought he saw that we were struggling and came over to help. (laughs) He came over over to pull Brian away from helping us so Brian could help him do something. Save save his yeah. car. <laughs> Something arguably more important, I guess. Uh, yeah. It, that, and I think that that's interesting. I guess it's just had my Burning Man hat on, and I'm like, well, why wouldn't we hang out? And then someone mentioned why, my, why me, we might not hang out. And I was <laughs> like, oh, you know what? That's fair. I don't need to know that if that is happening over there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we did find a miniature American flag. I did invite... Yeah, that area. So one of the pe- groups of people that Brian pulled off of the sand were two young hippies in a rental van, like a rental moving <laughs> van that were, but at least one of them was European. And after Brian pulled them out of the sand, he was like, their, uh, the wheel well up front was just full of beer cans and like one shot liquor bottles. Oof. <laughs> I did actually invite them to come over. I didn't know the, the, I mean, I saw them in the rental van, but they were just young, sweet, hippie looking kids. And I was like, we do have a campfire and a way to eat five minutes down that way. If you want to come say hi, but they never did. <laughs> it's probably best ice cream truck. Mm-hmm. I, I did see somebody as, uh, as I was leaving who looked familiar. Like Burning Man, familiar, but I was gonna do anything. Yeah, everybody looks familiar. I was I was pretty burnt out at the end. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it was exhausting, and we broke down all the shade, and it's still cold, but you're still in the sun. Mm-hmm. And like I was hanging out by the fire. As... It's cold. You're in the sun, and you're sweaty. Yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, Brian had been helping everyone get out, like help their He We needed him to take people's stuff out and then yank people's cars out. And, uh, Joe and I, uh, decided to stay and be last out with him because we're, we were going to probably need a yank. And, <laughs> uh, <coughs> and we were going to make sure that 
any detritus that was left got into our car. So uh, you could then bring it over here yes. and make me fat with Pringles. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and we were getting out at like four. And by the time I was done, I was just like, I am so fucking done. I just don't, I don't like sand anymore. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like, I am so sunburnt and so cold. <laughs> and, um, and we drove and decided to, to get a hotel in Reading instead of trying to drive all the way back because it was not, it was not in us. And it was 111 degrees in Reading that day. It was 98 degrees in the parking lot of the crummy Ramada Inn we stayed at. Oh, yeah. And it was like, my. this reminds me of Burning Man a lot. We're there with our packed up car, which is full of garbage, like, and dangerous thing. Joe cut himself on a saw while he was trying to oh, Jesus. readjust stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it is so hot, you cannot think. <laughs> and it's just like, wet, awful, hot with smoke in the air because there was a bunch of fucking fires. And it was just like being in hell. Being in that Ramada like parking lot was being in hell. It, it was the kind of hot where you have to leave the air conditioner on the car on the whole drive. Like Yes, you, we never it, turned it off. It never actually cools the cabin down enough to be cold. It just like keeps the heat off. Um, And uh, it was a giant, giant relief to do that but that whole drive out was like the kind of burnt out burnt out like i did not sleep mm -hmm. like i slept maybe four hours the first night and maybe i was not conscious for an hour or two <laughs> the second day and then like i just didn't sleep and I, as a responsible adult, just didn't eat. Like, oh, no, I didn't eat for <laughs> yeah. shit. I, I may have had, like, 2,000 calories over the entire span of the four days we were there. Sar made me some pasta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I choked down some delicious raviolis, but, like, wasn't even sure I needed those, like, 200 calories. <laughs> I, I ate, like, almost a whole bag of potato chips slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I only caught a sunburn on the tops of my feet, and I, I caught oh, it. Joe got a really bad burn on his one ankle. <laughs> it, it was that, that second day we were there when it got all cold. I was, like, completely covered up, but I didn't put on any sunscreen, but I sat there barefoot all day <laughs> with my feet in the sand. I think we did a good job finding a place that is almost as inhospitable as fucking Playa. <laughs> we did. Real challenging. It was a really sweatshirt beach kind of deal. <laughs> and weirdly enough, it, it wasn't supposed to be. And I, uh, it wasn't the day that you and I went to scout it out. It was lovely. It was like, yeah. m like mid to upper 70s. The part that clear. cracks me up is if it had been sunny, none of us would have gotten sunburned because we know how to not get sunburned. Yep. But the problem was is it was foggy and we forgot. We spent an entire day in the gray sun. In the gray sun. We never sun. saw the sun, but the sun saw us. And then everyone except for Brian had a sunburned face. <laughs> My face was mostly okay, but that's because I've been in the sun every day because of my job, and I'm yeah, like Ted wizened. <laughs> Ted just like burned this part of his face, just just, <laughs> just his the chin. top of his chin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, my nose got it. Uh, I had even put sunscreen on like mid morning. This is the first time I've peeled in ages, and it wasn't like big peeling, but it was like mm -hmm. I'm putting moisturizer on my skin, and yet that's my skin. Yeah. Don't need that anymore. That's done. <laughs> I didn't peel. I was tender for like just the day after for a little bit. Uh, and then I was fine. Because, you know, clouds. I felt so um, refreshed after this. And I, this is why I'm saying, like, I also, by the way, dear listeners, since my good friends in the room already know, I was having like a real anxious hard time trying to plan this. Like, Trying to plan, quote unquote. <laughs> it was a matter of like, Beth and I made a scouting trip and we sent out three emails. Yeah, but it was like, it, it's just my stupid anxiety. And thanks to COVID, my anxiety is even dumber. 
my anxiety went a little nuts over COVID. And this was like something I really cared about. And it's a bunch of people I really care about. And I don't want them to have a bad time. It had to be perfect listeners. It's not at all perfect. I'm happy with poop on phone and <laughs> Sandy butthole. I love the the hard bits of it not being perfect, but I didn't want anyone to fuck up their car. Mm -hmm. I didn't want anyone to fuck up their body like permanently. Like I didn't want anyone to have a very bad time. And I didn't like I wanted everyone to have a good time. And it's everyone not, did. Everyone did. Everyone had a great time. It was it, it of course, I don't want it to be perfect. That'd be stupid. It's so much more fun when it's messy and hard and, like, delightful. It it was silly and chilly and sparkly and full of dogs, and everybody loved it. I, I also, there was so much campfire. When was the last so time you sat around much a campfire? campfire? We all ate marshmallows and hot dogs and stuff. I also, this was a really great experience for me to vicarious through SAR. So SAR is one of my dearest friends, and I always love it when I get to introduce SAR to people that I know that SAR doesn't know that I have a fondness for, and just, like, watch SAR be SAR. It's, like, it's probably what compersion is, but less, like, creepy and poly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, so exciting for me to see people that I like liking each other. Um, and like noticing the things that are neat about each other and like providing a different lens for how I see them. Um, I just love that. There's so many, sh there's so much stuff that happens in community, like emotionally that we just lost during COVID. Like the sensation of being part of a group and like attending the emotional realities of that group. I know that sounds really hippie, but it's something that I feel at Burning Man a lot. Like, you're aware of what people are feeling mm -hmm. and you want them to, and it's like, you're not responsible for them, but you might be able to usher things moving in a slightly, like you're, there's a community level awareness of how people are getting along and who they're talking to and how their day is going. And like having that sense again, it was like, oh, I missed this. Like I forgot that this is part of who I am is someone that likes this sort of how, how to make this community thing work nicely for all of us. And it feels so comfortable and it feels so normal, especially if there are people that I like and know, but I, it's like this whole other sen sense of, of social structure that I just forgot existed and like went into COVID being like, I don't understand. I don't even like people. Why does this suck so hard? Like, I still get to see most of the very close people in my life, which is incredible and very lucky. But, like, I miss the dynamic of groups a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, you get to be the RA at the commune, Beth. <laughs> no, that is Rex. My apologies. He's HR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you get to plan movie night once a week. And, uh, and you get to do the whole... Uh, um, no, playlist I'm, for I'm for more the fire pit. on the fly emotional management. I'm more just like I don't want to plan stuff. It obviously causes me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just be around people I like and be conduit with them through each other. School marm. I am teaching now. Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, Beth is going to manage the pageant and the talent show. Oh, God, no. Mm -hmm. Afraid no, so. I, they, ha I, they have to exist, and you're the one with the skills. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Why do you got to be mean to me while I'm being earnest? I'm not being mean. I'm just expressing a truth. <laughs> How could you have a commune without a, at least one talent? Pa one pageant and one talent show. Well, obviously the commune is going to have a stage because we cannot exercise theater folk despite wanting to. Right? Yeah. You've got to have a stage. And if you're going to have a stage, the pageant and the talent show come baked <laughs> in. It's part of the starter kit. You can do other things if you like, but you can't exclude those. We're going to have to do a Christmas pageant, Beth. <laughs> <sighs> oh, no. Holiday, this baby please. Jesus isn't going to change himself. Solstice? Solstice pageant? I don't, I don't think this is 
my idea of group dynamic management. We're, we'll, we'll have, uh, we'll have an it. ecumenical celebration tree. <laughs> yeah, you'll know how everybody's feeling about things. No, it's fine. It's a, fine. A non-specific candelabra celebration. <laughs> uh, yeah, just group dynamics. Who remembers group dynamics? They're nice sometimes. Mm-hmm. Fuck that shit. Let's all work from home. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make sure that all of my interactions, I'm at least 80% staring at my own face. It's just like good for human connection. Ugh, I hate my face being on the screen. Oh, I hate it I so much. I hate that I haven't brushed my hair in days. Oh, you guys just need a ring light. <laughs> You're probably not wrong if I wanted to look like I was high and uh, blogging. Yeah. Micro blogging. Make, make all your lessons a YouTube video essay. Uh. Listeners, do yourself a favor. Get your friends together. Go camping. Yeah. Make make it make it a challenge for yourself. Don't don't take the easiest possible car camping. Do do something a little bit hard and have a lot of fun. Yeah. It's worth it. Challenge yourself in your anxieties to <laughs> enjoy the people that you love because despite us being away from each other a whole bunch, we still love each other. It's, that was really nice, too, of mm-hmm. just being like, oh, right. Uh, th- hi, people that I haven't seen in a while. Yes, I still love you. I'm so glad that you're here. We've had to be stuck inside for a long time away from those we love. We can be safe by seeing them outside. Go do it. Yeah. It's an order. Your your podcasting person tells you so. Don't Get vaccinated. Forget. Go camping. <laughs> yeah. Get vaccinated. Um, go camping. Like Get vaccinated. Go camping. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that you should like think about all the different temperatures that the place you're going can be, and like, <laughs> bring pants. Yeah, pack a pair bring of pants. pants. Like maybe a sweater too. <laughs> I, I want. I want to point out that in in like both of the big informational emails I sent out in support of this thing, which did go to D Day's inbox, I mentioned by the way we're going to Oregon. Dress. Remember that you might have to dress warm. Bring warm clothes. This is Oregon. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that uh, it was it was twenty four seven. I thought maybe there'd be warmth during the day. Sure, but you should have had at least one pair of pants. <laughs> yeah, they weren't camping pants. They were the pants that I'd been wearing for a couple of days already. I was I was all prepared to wear my fancy tank tops and my little booty shorts. Did you see that Shauna like brought a ski jacket jumper thing? Yeah. Oh yeah. Shauna incredible. Shauna had like all the tech. Shauna was kitted out mm-hmm. for cold camping. <laughs> Shauna is a person who is prepared to go camping in any climate right now. Oh, you're you're so right. At the yeah. drop of a hat, Shauna can go camping. I, I, I'm sure she has a a jacket system where I, she can add insides and outsides to make her jacket more or less uh, campery. I have been bike riding with this human, and Shauna has like the coolest bike riding jacket that I have ever seen. It has all these different ways that you can attach and unattach it to like air it out and give more space to it. Uh, yes. Very well prepared. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Some of us were, (laughs) (laughs) uh, I was almost well prepared. Like two out of 17 people ain't bad. If, if only I hadn't bought my tent at the flea market, (laughs) never buy your tent at the flea market. Do you know what we didn't run short on was cheap beer. We're still drinking that cheap beer. Cheap beer, uh, food. There's plenty of food. We're still eating those Pringles. <laughs> and uh, water, because we're adults and we brought enough water. Mm-hmm. Or toilet paper. No one ever was like, oh my God, toilet paper. We lost a lot of water on the way up. <laughs> we sure did. How did you lose water? We had uh, two five-gallon igloo coolers that we filled with water <laughs> that lost their lids at some point, and just <laughs> in every the truck. In, yeah, they, in they the were the kind the that don't have the screw top lids. They're just like <laughs> held in by friction, and there just wasn't quite enough. Why? Friction. Why didn't you guys just buy suitcases of water? We we, we got those too, did, but, but like, that didn't keep everything in the bed from getting soaked. <laughs> we had these igloos. We might as well use the igloos. <laughs> We ended up just filling them with ice in Oregon and letting that melt. Yeah, it was fine. We all had extra water. Yeah, go camping, make mistakes. Go camping, make mistakes. 
Uh, make stories. Stories are what make our life. Uh, over accuracy third, uh, send us an email um, or a friend request or something. Uh, we've started doing interviews again. So call us up. Tell us a story. We did our first interview in the studio since the COVID lockdown just this last uh, Friday. Guys, I think we might be able to see the end of never ending season five. Yeah. It'll... No. <laughs> no, maybe not. Never ending season five ends when the right gamma before, variant ends. Right before the next Burning Man. When we can go to Burning Man again, we'll we'll produce an end of season five episode. <sighs> and uh, and that'll be never ending season five. Uh-huh. We'll move on to season six. 